மோனோக்ளோனல் and polyclonal antibody production in the earlier class or earlier uh, in powerpoint presentation that we had seen uh, uh, how to produce anti sera the production of anti sera in that production of anti sera i told that uh, there are uh, types of uh, anti sera are present so these are all the two types of anti sera that comes under that is the first one is monoclonal and the second one is polyclonal anti sera so now we will see how this monoclonal and polyclonal antibodies are produced so before uh, entering into the production techniques now we will see a history of uh, this hybridoma technology or the production of uh, uh, monoclonal or polyclonal antibodies so this hybridoma technology is a method of producing a large number of identical antibodies so antibody in the sense it is a y shaped structure that is produced inside the body that can trigger the immune responses so it is also called as monoclonal antibodies so here are the fusion of uh, myeloma cell lines with the b cells create the hybridomas in the in you know in, in explanation or in the steps involved in hybridoma production that we can understand so here the myeloma cells are can be fused with the b cells that can produce hybridomas which are highly specific so this can produce antibodies so antibodies are as i told you that is a y shaped immunoglobulin structures that is produced inside the body that can identify a specific antigen and can trigger the immune responses so this technique was first discovered by kohler and milstein <clears throat> for the production of monoclonal antibodies and they shared nobel prize in 1984 in physiology and medicine he is a kohler and he is milstein and jernike these three scientists are received nobel prize on working of on production of uh, hybridoma technology that is for the production of monoclonal antibodies but the term hybridoma the term hybridoma was first coined by leonard hersenberg in 1975 so the term hybridoma was first coined by leonard hersenberg in 1975 it's a very very important hybridoma technology is a method of producing a large number of identical antibodies by the fusion of myeloma cells with the b lymphocytes or b cells is called hybridomas the production of hybridoma technology is called the production of hybridomas or specific antibodies is called hybridoma technology or monoclonal antibodies so this uh, somatic in somatic hybridization between b lymphocytes somatic hybridization between b lymphocytes and myeloma cells and hybrids are raising is called hybridoma so there is a fusion between b lymphocytes and myeloma cells can be happens the lines or the on the cells that is developed through this the fusion is called hybridomas so this hybrid acquire the ability to produce the specific antibodies this hybridomas can acquire for the production of specific antibodies from the b lymphocytes of cells and from the myeloma cells so this can be cultured in vitro this can be cultured in vitro in the tissue culture technique and can we can acquire or can we can produce the specific antibodies that we can require so this technique of production of specific antibodies or the antibodies is commonly called as hybridoma technology hybridoma technology is a technology which is used for the production of monoclonal antibodies or specific antibodies is known as hybridoma technology so which has in a uh, which has in a, which having uh, you know uh, producing the unlimited quantity of mono specific and monoclonal antibodies so that we can treat different types of serious diseases so now we will see what are all the steps involved in the production of monoclonal antibodies so in uh, as i told you that the kohler and milstein uh, discovered the hybridoma technology in 1975 further they got nobel prize in 1984 along with jernike so initially there are some steps in uh, hi- uh, this uh, hybridoma technology or the production of hybridoma or monoclonal antibodies here the first one is immunization second one is cell fusion third one is selection of hybridomas fourth one is screening the products that will, will be there in the next slide and then cloning and propagation and characterization and storage so now we will see one by one initially hyper immunization or immunization immunization in the sense we have we have to take a healthy rabbit or we have to take an healthy or uh, some other animals also can be used for the production of this monoclonal antibodies initially in laboratory condition we can choose the rabbit or we can choose some uh, small mice 
so here the immunization of animals by using uh, a mouse uh, immunization of a mouse by a specific antigen along with the fraud subjuvant in uh, you know in the production of uh, anti sera itself i told you that uh, uh, fraud subjuvant can be added so this adjuvant is a non specific that enhances the specific immune responses along with the presence of antigen antigen or that is immunogen immunogen in the sense we consider it as an antigen okay other name or synonym of immunogen or antigen antigen is always called as immunogen okay so oh, here uh, antigens are initially injected or the immunogens are initially injected into the mouse initially here the thing is several times of immunization can be done several times or several dosages of uh, uh, immunogens can be given to increase or to stimulate the production of specific antibodies so uh so uh, there are too many uh, there are more than two or three doses can be given after that what will happen if final doses can be given at the three days before killing the mice so if you want to harvest the spleen cells that we have to kill the rat or rabbit or whatever the test animal that we are taking so we have to kill the uh, test animal and you can harvest the spleen cells by using the density gradient centrifugation where by using this density gradient centrifugation lymphocytes are separated here we are injecting uh, we are injecting the antigen that is immunogen into the mice so there are two to uh, many doses of immunogen can be given for uh, enhancing the immunity as responses or the production of antibodies after that we can harvest the specific spleen cells or b lymphocytes along uh, uh, b lymphocytes for the production of monoclonal antibodies second one is cell fusion here so this uh, lymphocytes which are obtained from the uh, harvested spleen uh, are mixed with uh, hgprt hgprt in the sense hgprt hgprt in the sense hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase which are so this uh, uh, sorry this lymphocytes harvested lymphocytes are mixed with uh, hgprt which are deficient myeloma cells and are exposed to peg peg in the cells it is a fusing partner that is peg polyethylene glycol for a short period for the fusion so we are adding all these things for fusion only that is see here b lymphocytes are dying that is hgprt can be added and along with peg polyethylene glycol for the fusion purpose so the mixture containing hybridomas are free of myeloma cells and lymphocytes while mixing this uh, while mixing with the hgprt and the peg so the mixture of the spleen cells that we obtained is the hybridomas can be free from this myeloma cells and lymphocytes and the third one is selection of hybridomas so now we had isolated the hybridomas from this myeloma cells and lymphocytes after this uh, uh, you know uh, by mixing with uh, phosphoribosyl uh, uh, transferase that is uh, hgprt along with pg peg pg so here the selection of hybridomas selection of hybridomas that is third step here due to the lack of hgprt enzyme so in the third step you are not adding any hgprt enzyme in myeloma cells and blocking the synthesis of nucleotides here due to the absence of hgprt it blocks the synthesis of nucleotides the myeloma cells are dead and the lymphocytes are also slowly disappears uh, because uh, because the lymphocytes have very short life span so it's also start to slowly disappear after that only hybridomas with hgprt only hybridomas with hgprt from lymphocytes are survived here in the third step what we are doing selecting of hybridomas so in the third step due to lack of hgprt in myeloma cells and as well as in lymphocytes they are slowly disappears they are slowly dead the hybridomas contains a little amount of hgprt so that the lymphocytes uh, sorry hybridomas from the lymphocytes are survived so this hybridomas now this hybridomas are can be grown in a hat media hat in the sense hypoxanthine amino petrin thiamidin it is a specific media for the production of monoclonal antibodies as like we have seen in fungi that is kings bee medium that is selected for pseudomonas as like of the selective media here the selective media for the production of monoclonal antibodies are the hybridomas is hat media hypoxanthine amino petrin thiamidin that can be grown in 7 to 10 days a specially recommended medium for the production of monoclonal antibodies this medium this hgprt sorry uh, hat medium is the specific medium for the production of monoclonal antibodies now we will see the next step 
so here the fourth one is screening the products so now we had isolated the monoclonal antibodies so the product or the monoclonal antibody activity can be screened in elisa so the elisa this technique can be screened in elisa so this monoclonal antibodies can be purified by using gel electrophoresis or affinity purification so these are all the different types of technique can be there in purification but here is screening the products elisa can be normally used so here the antigen is coated in a plastic plates with a specific antibody to bind so we all will know that elisa is mainly based on antigen or antibody specific reaction so here the plates are initially coated with a specific antigen so that the antibody that is produced can be reacted and then can identify in the elisa plate itself so this antibodies are secreted in the elisa plate are homogeneous and are especially specific to the specific antigen is considered as monoclonal antibodies which are highly specific to the particular antigen the produced monoclonal antibodies are highly specific to a particular antigen after that what we are doing cloning and propagation so this isolated monoclonal antibodies are purified antibodies are can be cloned by using the two different types of techniques the first one is limiting dilution technique and the second one is soft agar method limiting dilution technique and soft agar methods are commonly employed methods for the cloning and propagation of monoclonal antibodies and the last one is characterization and storage so here biochemical and biophysical characterizations are made for the desired specificity even after it is highly specific so the final characterization so final characterization can be made for identifying the desired specificity of the antibodies that is we, that we obtained so this monoclonal antibodies are characterized for their ability to withstand freezing and thawing so freezing and thawing capacity can be analyzed and then can be stored in a proper temperatures this is about the production of monoclonal antibodies where we are immunizing the rat after cell fusion and the selecting the or isolating the specific hybridomas and the screening the products cloning and propagation and finally characterizing and storage this is about the production of monoclonal antibodies so the commercial production of monoclonal antibodies as i told you in the earlier i mean in the, in the uh, earlier slides the same host are can be immunized by raising the antibodies against the given antigen so here different types of animals can be used goat sheep hen rabbit mice so different types of animals can be used for the production of monoclonal antibodies initially immunizing the uh, host sorry that is uh, uh, rat or particular uh, uh, animal that we are selecting for the production of mabs and then uh, cell fusion uh, after for that uh, obtaining the tumor cells are the specific antibodies that we are doing the tissue culture and then you can produce the specific antibodies or uh, required antibodies uh, for the uh, for, uh, for for further uses so here uh, the production of uh, polyclonal antibodies also more or less similar to the production of monoclonal antibodies but there are some slight difference between monoclonal antibodies and as well as polyclonal antibodies now we will see so coming to the main differences between monoclonal antibodies and polo sorry polyclonal antibodies so here coming to definition monoclonal antibody shows a specificity to a single antigenic fitting agents that's why it's called monoclonal antibodies are highly specific it is only specific against this particular or specified antigen whereas polyclonal antibodies are anti serum containing a mixture of many different antibodies so here monoclonal antibodies are specificity against only particular antibody but polyclonal antibodies are name itself polyclonal which is specific which are not in the sense of uh, uh, anti serum containing different types of antibodies that can capable to detect different types of epitopes of plant viruses here the description coming to the description monoclonal antibodies are homogeneous in population of antibodies and are produced by the strong strong or single clone of a plasma b cells that i told you that the fusion of uh, uh, b lymphocytes and b cells are uh, that can produce monoclonal antibodies here in polyclonal antibodies they refer to the mixture of immunoglobulin molecules so this polyclonal antibodies are the mixture of immunoglobulin molecules that are secreted against a particular antigen that are secreted against a particular antigen so here this monoclonal antibodies are produced by the some clone same sorry same clone of a plasma b cells they are produced by the same clone of plasma b cells whereas polyclonal antibodies are produced by the different clones of plasma b cells coming to the cost of uh, production monoclonal antibodies are very expensive to produce whereas polyclonal antibodies are not expensive to produce 
and for the production of monoclonal antibodies require a very long time and it's a time expensive process whereas coming to the polyclonal antibodies the polyclonal antibodies are very quick to produce so coming to the specificity antibody as i told you monoclonal antibodies are highly specific it consists of generate a large amount of a particular or exact specific antibodies whereas it, it uh, polyclonal antibodies which generate a large amount of non specific antibodies it produce non specific antibodies so it is a monoclonal antibody the technique highly specific whereas compared to monoclonal antibodies polyclonal antibodies are less specific so coming to the hybridoma cell lines for production of monoclonal antibodies hybridoma cell lines are required whereas there is not so in a polyclonal antibody production so coming to the more uses of monoclonal antibodies they are used in the therapeutic drugs whereas uh, polyclonal antibodies can be used in the general research and application or the production of or testing of a new drugs so the polyclonal antibodies can be used so the coming of uh, coming to the merits of monoclonal antibody technique so this monoclonal antibodies are very widely used for the production of virus free or virus free certified plants especially potatoes and also used for the testing of vegetative propagative plants like sugarcane or the bulbs of uh, crops can be produced through this monoclonal antibody techniques so the miss monoclonal antibodies are mabs can be used to know the antigenic relationship among the plant viruses or the different strains of plant virus or the same strains of plant viruses can be used by using this monoclonal antibodies so this mabs is used to identify the amino acid sequence of coat protein of virus and also identify the assembly of plant viruses how this amino acid sequences are there and how this coat protein can be assembled inside the host vector can be uh, identified by using this monoclonal antibody technique mab is also used as a structural probe to know the biochemical structure between the plant viruses and the host protein what are all the different types of biochemical structure and reactions will happen in in between virus and host protein can be identified by using this monoclonal antibody technique so coming to the merits of monoclonal antibodies over polyclonal antibodies so, so what are all the monoclonal uh, uh, sorry uh, merits which are there in uh, uh, production of monoclonal antibodies or uh, uh, how uh, monoclonal antibodies are uh, advanced or uh, uh, better for far better than polyclonal antibodies now we'll see an unlimited quantity of monoclonal antibody can be obtained from a small amount of antigen so from small amount of antigen we can obtain a large amount of monoclonal antibodies so it avoid extra cost and time for the purification of antigen so pure monoclonal antibody specific for the single epitope see as i told you that monoclonal antibodies are highly specific against the particular antigen so it is otherwise not possible to produce to the polyclonal anti sera whereas polyclonal is non specific antibodies are produced in polyclonal antibody production whereas the monoclonal antibodies produce exact specific anti uh, uh, specific antibodies so here the hybridoma secreting the specific antibodies can be preserved in a liquid nitrogen which can ensure the type of supply of monoclonal antibodies over a long period of time so if we if we store this monoclonal antibodies in a liquid nitrogen so we can store it for a long time and we can supply whenever we want so this monoclonal antibodies eliminate the quantitative and qualitative variability in a specific antibody in different batches of polyclonal antibodies whereas these are highly quantitative and qualitative variability can be eliminated in monoclonal antibodies so if you take the polyclonal antibodies the quantitative and qualitative variabilities can be seen but in the production of monoclonal antibodies there is no such variants sorry the very uh, sorry such uh, uh, variations can be observed it completely eliminates the quantitative and qualitative variabilities so mab specific for single epitope that can be obtained when the complex of antigenic mixture is used so if we, in monoclonal antibody production the specific epitope or the specific antigen it can be produced sorry uh, the antibodies are produced against a specific uh, uh, antigen so that uh, this can be obtained the complex of antigenic mixture can be used if we use the complex of antigenic mixtures if we can obtain the specific antibodies that is required against the specific antigen so coming to the demerits of monoclonal antibodies so the production of monoclonal antibodies are technically more difficult because if we have to immunize the rat and we have to more it will take a lot of time as i told you that two to three months it will take uh, if you want to harvest sometimes it may take more than that so it may takes more time for the production as i told you time consumption will be very more 
the production of monoclonal antibodies is a very expensive process so these are all the demerits of monoclonal antibody production this is about the types of anti sera and about the monoclonal antibodies and the polyclonal antibodies